Hey, we like our four plus ones in Dodgerland, right? Well, the Dodgers got huge contributions from the big four and one to Oscar Hernandez winning the first game of the season against the Giants in fun fashion. We're going to dig into that and uh, a lot more. So let's get locked on Dodgers. You are locked on Dodgers, your daily Los Angeles Dodgers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, Dodger fans, this is Locked On Dodgers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks to our everydayers for making Locked On Dodgers your first listen every weekday morning. Remember, this show is free and available on all podcast platforms and on YouTube simply by searching for Locked On Dodgers. And please subscribe wherever you're watching or listening right now. If this is your first time with us, my name is Jeff Snyder. My co-host is Vince Samperio. Vince and I are both lifelong Dodger fans, just like a lot of you. We've also both spent time covering the Dodgers in the press box and the locker room. So we're not quite insiders, but we bring the smart fans perspective on our boys in blue every weekday morning. And Vince, you had your first game of the season as credentialed media today and uh, discovered that uh, the world of credentialed media has changed a little bit with the new additions to the Dodgers, huh? Yeah, there's a lot to get used to, uh, you know, nothing that's groundbreaking, but just a little bit different. And I have to approach the way I do my job a little bit different. But, uh, hey, you know, we made it in and uh, the Dodgers won. So, not too bad. Yeah, Vince is now a small fish in a big pond once again. So, uh, it's like high school all over again. Uh, but, yeah, the Dodgers did win. They beat the Giants 8-3. to three, And, you know, we're going to jump in. We, we discovered that the Dodgers are going with a bullpen game on – Tuesday, which means that Bobby Miller's next start won't be until Friday, which means we won't have an episode right after that. And so we are going to talk in the second segment about the starting pitching, including Bobby Miller, because uh, we have not yet given enough attention to his outstanding performance over the weekend. Uh, and then we are going to talk a little bit about that plan for the bullpen game in the last segment. But first, we want to talk about this game. And, and again, like we're not here to recap games for you because this game lasted two hours and 38 minutes, and there was a lot of action in it. We're not going to cover everything. We're in here, you know, obviously, if you didn't watch the game, you now know that the Dodgers won eight to three, uh, and we'll touch on some things that stood out to us. You can always check out the Locked On Dodgers postcast hosted by Pete Fox that goes live on Locked On Sports Los Angeles immediately following most games. I checked it out. Uh, this evening while I was waiting for Vince to drive home from Dodger Stadium, I watched Pete over there, and uh, you can also listen to that. It, the audio of that will be on uh, our podcast feed. Uh, so it's, you know, you, you could be a, an everydayer just by listening to our episodes, but if you want to be everyday or plus, uh, you can check out Pete too, and he goes more into the details of exactly what happened in the game. We're going to talk, you know, pick and choose sometimes, and the thing to pick and choose here from this game is – that the big four had a big four kind of game. Uh, Mookie Betts had two hits and a walk, scored three runs, uh, two extra base hits, actually. Freddie Freeman had three hits, uh, two RBIs, two runs scored. Uh, Shohei Otani had a double uh, RBI, a run scored. And Will Smith had a few more hits. Uh, I, I can't remember exactly. What, I, I know combined there were nine for 13. And so uh, let's see, three... To, so and did Smith, with most of those outs. Yeah, did Smith have three hits today? Uh, he might have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Smith's batting 500. Mookie's pushing 600. They're both, you know, Freddie's over 300 with an on-base percentage around 500. And, and Shohei is, continues to be the weak link uh, of Smith, those four. Smith, two for two at a walk. Two for two at a walk, okay. So uh, o Otani is the weak link of the four. But even that, like a bad game for Otani, he still did have – a double that set up a two run inning when the game was still very close. It was a one, nothing game at that point. Uh, Mookie was on Otani ripped a double. And then uh, both of those guys ended up scoring. And so a big part of that inning and the first run scored when Otani uh, after a leadoff triple by Mookie Otani hit a ground ball in the infield, which is all they needed. And so, uh, you know, there, there's, there's value in what he's doing, but it's also exciting to think about the fact that, uh, there's a lot more coming from Otani. Yeah, the Dodgers have scored at least five runs in every game so far this season, and that's with Otani having an OPS of 670. And what we talked about last night or yesterday was 
or this morning, uh, depending when when you think about it, uh, is that the bottom of the order hasn't really done much. Uh, James Altman has an OPS of 364, hitting 095. Gavin Lex is hitting 174 with an OPS of 348. We learned about Jason Hayward uh, dealing with some back issues. Uh, we'll talk about that later. But, yeah, all in all, the Dodgers are getting their production from the guys you want. Mookie, Freddie, Will Smith, Otani contributes here and there. You know, Muncie has contributed here and there. And then to Oscar Hernandez is that is that plus one who is uh, batting sixth but has had a lot of success in the ball over the wall the last few games. Yeah, if the big four are hitting, then really if you get contributions from one or two of the other five, you're going to be in good shape. And today that was to Oscar. The game was reasonably tight. Uh, like it, it never felt like it, the whole time it felt like the Dodgers had the game in hand. Uh, but you know, uh, down they were up three to one. Uh, Brazier had just given up a home run to Michael Conforto to to score the Giants' first run, and so uh, Dodgers kind of wanted to respond, and they got a couple guys on uh, against a rookie. The Giants uh, didn't want to let their left-handed rookie stay in to face Teoscar, so they went and got Tyler Rogers from the bullpen, and uh, Tyler Rogers came in and gave up a nuke to to Teoscar. It was it was one of the most visual uh, like it, i think w- between that and once the day that's before how, like, good it looked yeah yeah i think the the home runs the last two nights have been the two most fun to watch home runs the dodgers have had so far this year yeah because rogers you know throws so slow and from that weird angle and then Tay Oscar is basically putting all the juice into that home run and his swing doesn't even look like he doesn't have like a vicious, like Otani has a vicious swing. Tay Oscar doesn't, his swing is so smooth. And as soon as he hit that ball, I knew it was gone, but it, everything looks slow motion because the pitch was slow. Tay Oscar's swing is so smooth that it looks slow. And then the ball just, you know, just was destroyed over the wall. So yeah, he's going to be fun to watch. We we've seen, you know, the Jekyll and Hyde so far from the season, three strikeouts in one game. And then, you know, now on a homer tear. And realistically, that's kind of what we expected. A lot of home runs and a lot of strikeouts. And if we get a little bit more home runs and, uh, you know, some of the doubles that he's hit the last few games and everything else, you know, that's just going to be beneficial. He said that, it, it, you know, last year he struggled in Seattle and he said it was the ballpark was a little bit tougher to see the ball than some other parks. He said Dodger Stadium's uh, been really good uh, for him in terms of seeing the ball, and uh, that's what we're seeing so far. Yeah, it, it's a uh, it's a lot of fun. It was 107.4 miles an hour off the bat, 28 degree launch angle, 431 feet. So actually, pretty similar to Muncie's, a little bit lower. Uh, I think Muncie's 107.0, and I think his was 31 degree launch angle uh, and 420 feet. So yeah, both super impressive, beautiful home runs, and you you love to see it from T. Oscar. Uh, there's still, you know, we're not going to harp on it. He's still, you know, it is we're, we're hoping to cut down the strikeouts because we're just confident that probably he's not going to continue to hit home runs quite at this pace. And so we are going to need some, some singles mixed in there once in a while, probably. Uh, but you know, we'll take the home runs as long as we can get them for sure. And, uh, every home run on for righty, hopefully gives him more confidence and helps him find that groove so that it can help him out overall across the season all in all like this was kind of the game we kind of envisioned where when, when you got all these hitters it's like okay well Dodgers shouldn't have any problem putting a putting up eight eight runs and that's you know it wasn't like they ever you know he had a big home run here a couple little innings it wasn't a a slug fest they didn't just knock around all the pitchers but it was just relentless and when you're that relentless and, and Joe and Earl talked about it like you get through you get to the bottom of the lineup and you catch your breath and oh crap, Mookie's up again. Like it, it, there's just it's a long lineup. And with the Oscar hitting sixth, I mean, yeah, I mean the the seven, eight, nine spots were pretty easy to get through. Uh like it seemed like Gavin Lux let off uh, an inning every time he was up because uh whoever better before him, Taylor or Outman, uh, I think Taylor okay. had made the third out and and uh after Outman made the second out. Uh, you know, so part of the lineup was easy to get through. But part of it was really hard to get through, and and that'll put up eight runs for you most of the time. Yeah, very similar game to opening day where top of the order did a lot of damage, um, and then they got a couple of, you know contributions from the bottom end. Obviously, a bigger one today with Teoscar. But all in all, that's you know what this offense is supposed to be. We've seen the Dodger offense in the past, and we've talked about it. You know, scoring runs in bunches early in the game, and then kind of teetering off. And we've you know said, hey, I'll take five runs in the first inning, and 
and you know you have eight more innings or seven more innings to try to score more runs but this offense might seem a little bit different just because like you are gonna have to face Mookie and Otani and Freddie at least three times a game and realistically uh four or five times a game and there's not too many pitchers or pitching staffs that can get through those three guys five times a game and not give up some runs and then you know, like I said getting some contributions from anybody else is just you know uh you know uh, what am I thinking of the sweetener on top the the icing on the cake icing on the cake there you go there you go <laughs> I'm here for all your uh your food based analogies so there you go uh and you know the other thing is uh, James Paxton had a pretty good Dodgers debut. We're going to come back in a second. We're going to talk about Paxton's game and uh, how it kind of caps off a pretty darn successful first trip through the starting rotation for the Dodgers. So thank you for making Locked on Dodgers your first listen, and please keep it Locked on Dodgers. This episode is brought to you by Amazon Fire TV. Look, if you don't have a fire stick, you should get a fire stick. If you don't know what it is, it's a little stick that uh, – It has an HDMI port built in. You just plug it into your TV, your existing TV, and you can watch whatever you want to watch wherever you are, including if you're watching on YouTube, you can see up on the screen, this is my boys watching Stranger Things in the back of our Suburban while I drove them to Arizona a week or two ago. It it, it makes watching what you want to watch so easy, whether it's sports, uh, live games, highlights, in-depth analysis. You can also watch uh, cooking shows, uh, all the sports leagues, entertainment, gaming, travel, uh, news, whatever you want. And Fire TV recently created Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands all for free. That includes all of us at Locked On and most of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well. Fire TV channels let you dive into all the game analysis highlights and more to keep up to date on all the latest in the world of sports, March Madness, NBA, MLB, and lots more. Plus all those channels I talked about, you can check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV, Fire Stick, uh, all Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you really should. Trust me on this. To learn more, visit amazon.com slash locked on fire TV. Hey, we're back. We want to thank you for making Locked On Dodgers your first listen every weekday morning. Especially want to thank our everydayers. If you're not an everydayer, it's easy to become one. Just watch or listen every weekday morning. Uh, you can also become a Locked On Dodgers insider by going to joinsubtext.com slash Locked On Dodgers. Just a few bucks a month with a free 14-day trial, and you can text back and forth with us. You get our thoughts on news, breaking news, rumors, whatever, throughout the day, and have one-on-one conversations. It's a lot of fun, so check that out. You can also check out Locked On Sports uh, Los Angeles and Locked On Sports uh, today to 24-7 streaming channels over on YouTube from the Locked On Podcast Network. And remember, you can catch every pitch of the hometown broadcast for every Dodger game on SiriusXM, the SXM app, just by searching for Dodgers. Uh, and with that said, James Paxton pitched five scoreless innings in this game. Wasn't dominant by any means. I think uh, four hits and five walks in those five innings, but he pitched around trouble. He got a lot of weak contact and a lot of swing and miss. He got strikeouts when he needed him. He got pop-outs, pop-outs when he needed them. And uh, Dave Roberts let him, you know, gave him the veteran treatment. You know, they had said 90 pitches, and Paxton got himself into trouble in the fifth inning, and Roberts let him go to, I think it was 97 pitches or something that he ended up at. And, and Roberts said, okay, you know, I don't think you would have let him go another batter because uh, it was bases loaded. And so if he walks another guy, that's a run. Uh, and at that point it was three to nothing, you know, it would, at that point you have the tying run and scoring position. They probably would have yanked him, but they did let him clean up his own mess and, and it worked and it was kind of, you know, we talked about how they tried to do that with Joe Kelly and it didn't work. Uh, but that's kind of the, the same approach. You made a mess, go ahead and clean it up. You're a veteran. We're, you know, we're not going to baby you here. Uh, and it overall this outing capped a really successful first five games of the domestic schedule the first time through in the United States for this rotation. It's been really good, Vince. Yeah, I mean, Paxton, five innings, no runs. You had Yamamoto do the same, and, and those are the weak links. And then you got, you know, Glasnow had a good start on opening day, and you had, obviously, Bobby Miller's big-time start, and then you had Gavin Stone. Or I guess the Gavin Stone brought up the rear, but – even then, you know, his start was, was good enough. From, Stone pitched a lot better than his final line showed. Yeah, and and, and Vesey coming in didn't you know, necessarily help that. But 
it was exactly what you need. You need your top guys to pitch like top guys. That's what happened. And then you need the back end of the rotation to just give you some innings uh, that are quality. And, and that's what they got from these guys. They got quality innings. And you can't complain. Uh, you know, James Paxton, could he have been more efficient? Obviously, you know, walking that many guys is is not ever really a recipe for success. But he got the ground, big ground ball he needed in the fourth inning. He got the outside he needed in the fifth inning. Is it always going to be like that? No. But realistically, like we talked about in the first segment with this offense, if you can give me, you know, five and three, six and three, even six and four from the four and five spots in the rotation, you're still going to win a lot of games with this offense. And then if the top guys pitch like the top guys, then, uh, you know, that's the recipe for success. Yeah, absolutely. And Paxton's unlikely to walk five batters most of the time. So the fact that he was able to work around all that traffic, traffic that's not likely to be there, uh, in, in most of his starts, you know, he probably will have some bad luck sometimes, give up an extra base hit and, you know, with the runner on. He, he's going to allow some runs this year, uh, but I think he's going to pitch pretty well. And we we saw that. The fastball, you know, Clayton Kershaw talked about it on the broadcast, the fastball plays up in the zone. He doesn't need to throw 99. He His 95 is enough with its carry and everything. Uh, all right. Can we talk about Bobby Miller's changeup now? That changeup in the first inning – like, it, you know how I feel about changeups, Vince. Even if I didn't feel that way about changeups, I would have after seeing that pitch. Like the way Will Smith went to catch that ball, and he knew it was, he called the changeup. He knew a changeup was coming, and he still almost couldn't catch the ball because it moved. It, it broke two feet. It was it, it was ridiculous. It was the craziest changeup I've ever seen, and uh, it made me love Bobby Miller even more. Yeah, you look at the line from his game and, you know, the 11 strikeouts, everything else. Then you look at the swing and miss and only nine swings and misses, but six of his 11 strikeouts were looking. So when you have all your stuff rolling and, and Bobby Miller has one of, when everything's working, he has one of the best arsenals, not just on the Dodgers, but in baseball in general. Like not a lot of people can command and control that many pitches. And when you look at his breakdown, you know, you got, 42% fastballs. The fastball was cooking. He was dotting the corners, you know, getting guys to look and, and catch the corner and, and then breaking that up with 22% changeup, 52% curveball, 13% slider, 9% sinker. Like he almost had five pitches for to at least 10% of, it, of his time. He's hitting 100 miles an hour. He's going as low as 80 miles an hour with the curveball. Like that was the Bobby Miller we've kind of envisioned when we think about what the best version is. And yes, obviously, you know, the Cardinals offense might not be the best, but nobody else did that. Uh, the Padres played the Cardinals today and and or to last night, if you're watching this right now. But and they gave up six runs like there. There's it's not going to be like again, it's not always going to be like that. But if he can be like that more often than not. And what the issue what we saw him last year is just kind of when inning would always kind of snowball. That inning almost happened in that sixth inning, and then he gets the big strikeout to end the inning and, and finish his day, you know, without allowing any runs. So it was fun to watch, even, you know, Apple TV broadcast. I don't know how many people got to watch it, but if you did, uh, you were a lucky one. Yeah, uh, and I mentioned this on Twitter. Uh, the reason that Dave Roberts was able to let Miller battle through that sixth inning was because Teoscar had hit a big insurance home run, and so the game wasn't on the line. It was just Miller's performance, so they were able to leave him in there. Uh, it, it was it was so much fun to watch, uh, and, and I guess Yamamoto too. Like after the disastrous outing in Korea, five runs in one inning, uh, didn't even get to start the second inning, to come out and uh, right off the bat striking out the side in the first inning against the Cardinals, and then you know it looked like he was going to get derailed by the rain delay after the fourth inning, and the Dodgers let him come back out. It was a very short rain delay as far as rain delays go. Um, and they let him come back out and pitch the fifth inning and, and he got through that. It was, uh, I, I feel like the, that was maybe the most important performance of the weekend because both for Yamamoto's confidence and for the fans confidence in Yamamoto to see, Oh, this is why the Dodgers signed this guy. Like if, if you're not, if you never watched Yamamoto pitch in Japan or in the WBC, all you've seen is one good start in spring training and then two lousy starts and then a lousy start in Korea. And it's like, okay, what, what's the big deal about this guy? Well, 
Saturday we got to see what the big deal is about Yamamoto. Yeah, and you know, moving forward, getting comfortable. It's just all going to contribute to him being well. Uh, you know, that'll perfectly segue into what the Dodgers are doing on Tuesday in order to make sure everybody kind of stays on track the rest of the way. Yeah, the Dodgers are going to throw a bullpen game on Tuesday. We're going to dig into that. They made uh, some roster moves that may be kind of related to that and potentially an injury-related roster move. So we're going to dig into all that. So thanks again for making Locked on Dodgers your first listen, and please keep it Locked on Dodgers. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel. The sports calendar is loaded and FanDuel is making it more exciting, even more exciting to get in on the action because right now new customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. Look, the NCAA tournament is getting pretty late. It's maybe harder to have. You don't have those 16 seed versus one seeds anymore for your easy $5 bet, but maybe you feel really confident in UConn or Purdue or one of those teams that's in the final four. You can put five bucks on that. (coughs) Excuse me. Uh, That sneeze was brought to you by FanDuel. You can put five bucks on any any game that you're confident in, and if you win, you get $200 in bonus bets. That's 200 bucks that you can use to bet on the tournament, MLB, NBA, NHL, and so much more. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet a big win. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Hey, we're back. Uh, apparently, we're sponsoring sneezes these days. Thank you again for making Locked On Dodgers your first listen, especially thanks to our everydayers. Become an everydayer by watching and listening every weekday morning. Become a Locked On Dodgers insider by going to joinsubtext.com slash Locked On Dodgers. Check out Locked On Sports Today and Locked On Sports Los Angeles, the two 24-7 streaming channels on YouTube from the Locked On Podcast Network. You can, uh, right after most Dodger games, you can head over to Locked On Sports Los Angeles and listen to Pete Fox on the Locked On Dodgers postcast. A uh, different voice than ours, uh, different perspective, uh, but more of a recap kind of show. Uh, if you enjoy that, you you know check it out. You might enjoy it. And uh, always check us out for sure. And remember, you can listen to the hometown broadcast every pitch of every Dodger game on SiriusXM or the SiriusXM app by searching for Dodgers. And also, you can listen to this podcast on the SXM app by searching for Locked on Dodgers. I think that's all that out of the way. Uh, So I I guess uh, our graphic has Jason Hayward first. Yeah, let's talk Hayward first. Uh, We'll get to the bullpen game in a second. Uh, But Jason Hayward missed the game. Well, he wasn't going to be in the starting lineup on uh, Sunday anyway because it was a lefty pitching for the Cardinals, Uh, but we found out later that he was actually unavailable that game, uh, and he was unavailable on Monday, and Dave Roberts said after Monday's game he won't play on Tuesday either uh, because of some lower back tightness. He's got some imaging done. They're waiting on the results of that last I saw, at least when we started recording this. Uh, And so, Vince, this is the same injury that that – flared up in the freeway series that kept him out of a game or two in that series. Uh, it seems like it, if it's going to be a nagging thing, it could be something that lands him on the IL. So I thought we'd dig a little bit into the Dodgers options because if, if Hayward goes on the IL, it seems like there's really only two options to replace him, right? Yeah. I mean, almost literally just two options to replace him. Uh, just with the, the roster crunch the Dodgers already have. I mean, they still have Frost available, I believe, for a 60-day, but it seems like they're trying to save that for uh, something down the line where it becomes more necessary. If you already have Miguel Vargas and Andy Pajes down uh, and ready to come up, then it makes sense, especially like Pajes, who really had a good spring, who showed that you know he could bring some power to the lineup and – you know, could could be a guy you want to get a look at. Like, you know, no offense to Jason Hayward. It's been a slow start from maybe that back's been bothering him, but you're not necessarily counting on him to be a huge contributor, you're expecting him to be a solid contributor in his role facing right-handed pitching. But you know, Andy Pajes is a guy who if he caught if he gets hot or if he is what we saw in the spring is what he really is, like that's somebody that lengthens your lineup even more. Yeah, he could definitely on any given day be that plus one and the four plus one uh, of giving the Dodgers some thump at the bottom of the lineup, you know, whether he's batting seventh or eighth or ninth or whatever. Uh, it, it's the, the one thing that makes it a little tricky is Hayward only plays against uh, right-handed pitching right now. Uh, 
Uh, and Kike was basically promised that he would start against all left-handers. And, and so, you know, I guess in a perfect world, the Dodgers would have a left-handed hitting outfielder available to call up to replace Hayward to just kind of slot into that platoon role. Um, they have Drew Avens, but he's not on the 40-man roster. Uh, they maybe have others, but I mean, really there, there's, it's the two right-handers. And so, you know, the, the, you don't necessarily have to stick with the platoon. You could still let Kike start against lefties, whether it's in right field or, or, you know, whichever outfield spot, uh, that platoon spot, or, you know, okay, let's give Muncie the day off this time and Lux the day off this time. That's the nice thing about Kike being able to play everywhere is he doesn't have to be locked into a platoon role. And so Andy Paw has that. That's the big concern is you don't want to call Paw up to sit on the bench. Uh, and because his, his development is still happening, but I think you could get him, you know, starting three out of every four games or whatever uh, in the big leagues. If Hayward does have to go on the IL and I think it would be pretty exciting. I obviously I'm not hoping for a severe injury to, to Hayward that caused him to go on the IL, but uh, you know, Pius would be a pretty nice silver lining if that does happen. Yeah, it's one of those where you want to see Pajes, and realistically, if you had to pick one person in the lineup that you would mind seeing get less at bats, it would be Jason Hayward at the moment, even with the other guy struggling. And like I said, Hayward represents a very, I wouldn't say low ceiling, but like a mid tier ceiling. Like I can reach it on my tippy toes, uh, but not quite, you know, without that. So, but Pajes would be exciting. And, and what we've seen from the Dodgers in the past is they don't normally call their young guys up if it's not to get a chance to play at least significantly. So that's where it would come into question if it does become a longer term play because uh, they don't have anybody else on the roster that could be a guy that comes up and is on the bench. They'd have to find somebody, add somebody, you know, and then even then they don't have, they have a couple guys down in OKC that could be like, call up and DFA type guys, but some of the other guys are probably not someone you really want to lose for depth purposes. Yeah. And sometimes you get called up and you just force the issue and you never go back in 2017. Cody Bellinger got called up when Jock Peterson got hurt. And then Bellinger played well enough that when Jock came back, the Dodgers said, Hey, Adrian, uh, I think your back hurts. And so, uh, you know, made a roster spot for him and he stuck around and I don't think he ever went back to the minors. Um, one guy who didn't stick around very long, was Nabil Krismat, uh, the winning pitcher in Sunday's game, is now uh, off the 40-man roster, having been DFA'd to make room for his former teammate. Uh, Your lockdown Dodgers was right. Yeah, I, I don't have to eat my <laughs> shoe. Um, Denelson Lamet got, got added to the 40-man roster to take that spot, added to the active roster, and just like Krismat, uh, pitched two innings in his first day on the roster. Possibly just like Krismat might... Uh, you know, might be DFA again soon. We'll see. One interesting thing about a DFA at this point is it doesn't necessarily mean that Chris Matt is leaving the organization because any team that would claim him on waivers would have to be willing to add him to their 40 man roster right now. And those spots aren't super uh, abundant at this point in the season. Uh, and, and the fact is Chris Matt, he pitched well on Sunday I don't think he's going to be a super high demand guy. So it wouldn't be, uh, I wouldn't be shocked if somebody claims him, but I also wouldn't be shocked if he ends up back in Oklahoma city, just off the 40 man roster, basically like he was two days ago. And uh, you know, the same kind of thing would go for Denelson Lamette. If, if they did DFA him, you know, it also wouldn't be shocking to have, uh, you know, an injury pop up as they head into this bullpen game you know, to get Kyle Hurt back up on the roster. Uh, hey, Joe Kelly, your your command tool is sprained. Um, you know, obviously, it's early in the season, uh, especially with MLB maybe being more vigilant about phantom injuries because of some talk in the offseason. Uh, by the time September rolls around, there's no such thing as a phantom injury. Everybody has something going on that they could use two weeks off to, to rest it. Uh, April 2nd. Uh, April 3rd, you know, that time period, maybe, maybe it's harder to get somebody on the IL to get Kyle hurt back up. But, you know, the Dodgers are going with the bullpen game on Tuesday. We don't know yet. I don't think who's pitching for the giants. It's, it's uh, Logan Webb spot in the rotation, but Joe and Oral seem to think that there might be a chance that the giants might do a bullpen game too. 
Um, if I was the Giants, I'd go with Logan Webb because that's your best chance to win a game of the series is throw your ace against the bullpen game from the Dodgers. Uh, but, you know, uh, I, I am not the manager of the Giants, as you've noticed. Yeah. Um, well, well, it's it sucks to see a bullpen game this early as just a general fan, especially the way the starting pitching has been rolling. I understand what the reasoning is for it. I thought it I thought it was not going to happen because they do have the off day. And uh, at the very least, Yamamoto and Stone and Paxton would get the extra day. And Glasnow and Bobby Miller would have pitched on, on normal rest. But it, it makes sense to to steal these types of things where you can. And that's just the nature of the game these days is that you're going to have open games every so often or, you know, spot starts here and there. The Dodgers don't necessarily have the depth for the spot starts right now just because uh, there's a few injuries and everything else. But. Yeah, uh, you know, Ryan Yarbrough is going to take down a few of those innings, and we'll see what else uh, can come up in, in, in terms of that. At least, the very least, uh, they only used Brazier, Kelly, and Nelson Lament last night, so they'll have some fresh arms. Yeah, including, you know, the, their best ones probably right now. You have Evan Phillips and Daniel Hudson. Um, and, and, you know, they have Michael Grove, who's available for multiple innings, which I know is music to Vince's ears. Uh, Vince has been banging the only one inning for Michael Grove drum. Uh, yeah, I, I get it with, with Glasnow's injury history and Miller, maybe throwing a few more pitches than they ideally would have liked in his last start with, because they did let him get through the six innings. You know, I, I think they would benefit from the extra day off. Uh, and so I don't, and, and for that matter, Yamamoto getting the two days off. So he's actually this time through, it is basically it for his first three starts. He will be on the, on the one week schedule. Like he was in Japan, uh, all in all, it'll be interesting to see. Realistically, if the Dodgers offense shows up, it doesn't matter who pitches for them. Uh, other than that one game in Korea, for the most part, the Dodgers offense is going to carry this team uh, when it can. So, yeah, we'd love to hear your thoughts You know, on the bullpen game, on Hayward, on the starting pitching, on the big four plus one, all that stuff. If you're watching on YouTube, we'd love to hear from you, the YouTube comment section. The comment section was popping on yesterday's episode. We appreciate that. Got, you know, we our audience showed up for that you know, our first episode of the first you know weekend of baseball uh that was a lot of fun a lot of fun conversations going on in the comments there obviously if you're listening on the podcast you can either hop over to youtube just to comment or you can reach out to us i'll give you all that contact info in a minute but uh i think that does it for us for us for today vince you got anything else i got nothing else let's uh go in another one yeah we will be back tomorrow to talk about uh, this bullpen game and and hopefully another big offensive explosion. Remember, you can if you can't watch the game on TV, you can catch every pitch of the hometown hometown, hometown broadcast on Sirius XM or the SXM app by searching for Dodgers. Uh, you can become an everyday or for Locked On Dodgers by watching and listening every weekday morning. Uh, it's pretty darn easy and it's a lot of fun for us and hopefully for you too. You can become a Locked On Dodgers insider by going to join subtext.com slash Locked On Dodgers and you can check out Locked On Sports Today and Locked On Sports Los Angeles, the two 24-7 streaming channels over on YouTube from the Locked On Podcast Network. You can follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at Locked On Dodgers. Vince is on Twitter at Vince since 91. I am on Twitter at Snydog. Our DMs are open there. You can also email us LockedOnDodgers at gmail.com or send us a voicemail or a text message to 323-863-LOCK-5625. We are here every weekday morning, and we hope you'll be here with us. When you get in your car or sit on your couch, tell your smart device to play podcast Locked on Dodgers. And remember, you don't have to agree. You just have to listen. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Have a good one.